What up, everybody? Today we have an incredible Born to Slay testimony with my really amazing, amazing, I was going to say client, but I really, I don't know. I, I really feel like my clients are more like friends. Uh, but Mary Catherine is here with me today. And um, oh, yeah, I need to introduce who I am. So if you're just watching this testimony and you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I am a next level confidence coach mindset expert. I help teaching badass business owners, entrepreneurs, agency owners, founders, and lots of different industries how to use the mindset techniques of the top 1% use. Here's a secret. A big piece of that is co-creation. And uh, which means you and God working together to do the thing. So Mary Catherine, first of all, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime. So for people who don't know you or don't know your industry, why don't you just tell everybody uh, where you're from and what industry you're in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am a travel agency owner. Um, when I started Born to Slay, I was actually just in the process of moving from a host agency into building my own agency. And so those becoming a travel agency owner and Born to Slay kind of happened like all at the same time, which I feel like was really great because it set me up for success as an agency owner when I was making a big transition so that I didn't feel as overwhelmed and like didn't struggle with a lot of some of the like common things that happen when you make a big shift because I was taking actions so that those things didn't seem or like feel as overwhelming. So I love it. That's a little so bit that's amazing. Now tell everybody what was going on with your mindset that led you to born to slay. <laughs> So when I met Brandon, like in person at an event last April or back in April, I guess, um, one of the big hurdles I was overcoming was just feeling okay with showing up as myself and not really knowing what that looked like being in the body that I am. And so like, we talked through that a lot. Um, I don't, can you say the question again? Yeah. Like, what was going on with your mindset that led you to do born to slay? Yeah. So one thing I told Brandon, like during that was, I think oftentimes I know that there are hiccups and like issues, but sometimes I have blind spots and it's really helpful to have other people point them out. So that's where born to slay really came in because in chatting with Brandon and having him kind of be able to identify the issues that I was facing, um, and help me find a tangible solution. Um, I was able to see that he was a really good blind spot identifier. And I think that's one of the like first things I called you was I was like, I need somebody who can point out my blind spots. I know I have them, but I don't always know what they are. And born to slay did a really awesome job through just really helping me to ask myself better questions. And by Brandon asking me better questions and providing consistent encouragement to make the necessary changes it helped me identify my blind spots and not only that, but identify or like come up with a plan to continue identifying blind spots, even after I was out of the program. I love that. I'm laughing because you keep using the word blind spot, which this is the first time I've heard someone use that. I have actually had, if you all watch Jamie's testimony, she's like, I reached out. I didn't even know why I reached out. I was just like, I knew there's mindset work to be done. And it, and mindset is somehow keeping me from my next level. I love that you said blind spot uh, because, I mean, blind spots is often why we get into crashes. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've seen, there's like this chart that, that it's broken into four chunks. 
And one chunk is things you know about yourself and things other people know about you. Another chunk is things you don't know about yourself that other people do know about you, which are your blind spots. Then there's the chunk of things you know about yourself that other people don't know about you, which is like things, I guess, like gaining self-awareness and then figure out how to share that. And then there's the chunk where like, no, like you don't know it and other people don't know it. So having someone in that third quadrant who can do a really good job of encouraging you while also gracefully pointing out your blind spots is key. So that's, you know, that's where the blind spot terminology comes from for me. I love that. So I have a question that I have not asked other people before. But it's something that's been really gestating with me personally, as I grow and scale my own businesses, is that mindset matters more than the practical pieces, because mindset informs how you apply and use all the practical pieces. And one thing that I love about you, Mary Catherine, is that you are also investing in practical pieces, right? So I want to be honest and transparent of that, which I think is amazing. I think people should invest in practical pieces. But what I'm curious about is... One, why did you decide to also invest in mindset and how did the mindset actually um, impact the practical things that you're doing in your business? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is, is like mods. I think it's mod six, um, just Ivy Lee and needle movers. I think I knew I needed to take actions but I really had a hard time figuring out how to prioritize those because everything felt important. And so for me, the mindset piece of that was really like there's there's a module that really talks about identifying what are going to be needle movers in your business. And so for me, I know each of the practical pieces is going to move the needle in some shape, form, or fashion, but I needed to figure out which one was going to move the needle most so that I could figure out how to prioritize more effectively instead of everything just feeling like it carried equal weight. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what, that's what some of the lessons in this course have really given me is a framework for how to prioritize so that I am attacking the most important things first and moving forward from there, which then just allows me to, it's really given me the opportunity to accelerate my growth because I can piggyback off of what I've already done. And that allows me to accomplish other tasks quicker. I mean, I'm taking like, I'm taking more time to rest, more time to be with my family, um, more time to travel and just like, and, and Brandon knows this, like I really had a hard time taking time off to rest until I realized that like, for me, rest was going to be a needle mover because I wasn't going to be as effective until I took a nap. But that didn't mean I was napping for three days. It meant I was taking the nap and then getting back to work. But my work was getting done faster and more effectively and from a better like mood and from me working from a better place because I'd taken the nap. So that's where I think it really helped me is, is just learning how to prioritize and learning that prioritization is a piece of mindset work and being comfortable sitting with my list and figuring it out from that perspective. <laughs> oh, I love all these things that you're saying because they resonate with me. And I'm thinking about Winston Churchill. I don't know if you knew this, Mary Catherine, but Winston Churchill, all while leading the Allied forces during World War II, while like the bombing was going on in London and he was in the bunkers and like all that kind of stuff, he would say, I don't remember how many naps it was, but it was like, he'd wake up, work for a few hours, then nap, work for a few hours, then nap, eat lunch, work for a few hours, nap. Like he would nap like three to five times a day. And it actually really helped him to stay focused, intentional. And a, a piece that I, I'm not going to give the full details because they're inborn to slay, but there is also this piece of letting rest and nap time or when you go to bed handing things over to god 
for the universe to work out in your favor through love with divine answers and divine inspiration, which is a big piece. Which brings me to my next question, which is one of the things that I love is course so much is co-creation because so many people do not talk about co-creation. A lot of mindset is just like, um, you, 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 you. And the way that I teach it is, It is you because God's greatest gift is our free will and choice, but it's choosing to believe and have faith in who God created you to be and choosing to believe that God has your back and is going to have grace help you. And like the whole integration piece is combined with co-creation. Tell me how that has impacted your life and business. Yeah. So, um, it's funny that you ask that because I, you and I were talking this morning and I mentioned that really I used to confuse like cockiness with confidence because I thought it was all me, me, me. And I really struggled with that because I don't like spending time with cocky people. I find them kind of obnoxious and I find it really hard to be around. And so I was like, that is not what I want to become. And so it was really hard to develop confidence when that's what I thought it was. But when I realized that confidence is really like a humble attitude of gratitude, just being thankful for the doors that God is opening for me to walk through and me walking through them with my head held high, that really changed everything. Um, because then I can, I can take new opportunities and I can be gracious and humble in taking those. And I can also realize that there are the opportunities that God has placed in front of me for a reason and, and for a purpose. And it would be foolish for me not to take those opportunities as opposed to me thinking that I have to do it on my own, which works well for a while, but ultimately it just leads to burnout. And I've experienced that in my life. And I, I was afraid of going back there because it's just not a fun spot to be. Um, but realizing like I can really depend on and trust God to bring me the right opportunities has just been an absolute gift and blessing, not only in my business, but also in our family. I mean, Halfway through this course, I was on a call with you and you were like, you're in a new spot. And I was at my grandmother's picking up a puppy that two weeks before had not been an option. And, and so it's just like seeing not just the business opportunities, but also just the life opportunities that God is placing in front of me and, and taking those with confidence instead of a haughty attitude, I guess. Yeah. So I love all of that. And I also want to be clear to everybody listening, like y'all on my one-on-one coaching sessions, I often do this thing where I put my hand over my heart and I'm really quiet. And Mary Catherine knows this. And whenever I do that, that is actually me in prayer, asking God for wisdom and help because I learned a long time ago. I do not have all the answers and I am so grateful um, to see what, what is happening in your life and your business. Now there's going to be people that are watching this and they're going to say, great, Mary Catherine, all that is great, but we want to hear the practical results. Like what happened to your sales? Like, did you manifest some money? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like people always want to know, like, great, we get it, change your mindset. But like, what is the, what are the tangible things that happen in your business as a result? Uh, definitely sales. I, I went from, you know, I, I, I really tripled my sales and my, just in my 12 weeks in the course. And even after those 12 weeks, I keep jumping like significantly every month. And one thing that, um, one thing that this course talks about is, is affirmations, but really giving yourself affirmations that feel good. Um, and so I think sometimes people are like, oh, well, I'm just going to say like this affirmation because somebody else has told me to say it, but then there's not really a, 
there's not really a belief behind it. Like people are yeah. like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to make a mil- like, I'm going to be a million dollar agency is like a big one that I hear from people in our, in this industry. But for me, the big one was like, just saying like, okay, you know, starting at like $12,000 in sales is our new normal and then 15 and then 18. And so it's gone from that to like, instead of adding 3k, adding 6k or adding or, or just doubling the number and, and just trusting God that he's going to bring those sales the next month. And that is our new normal. And I I get to decide what that looks like. I love that. So the other thing that I talk about is the ripple effect. And there's not a lot, uh, this is another reason why, like when you, when you do practical courses, the ripple effect might not be as transparent sometimes. I mean, like, you know, practical pieces, marketing, increased sales, you know, you have more money to spend with your your family. But what I really love about Born to Slay is because so much of it about is about love and energetics. There's forgiveness, there's relationships. Um, how did the principles inside of Born to Slay have a ripple effect to like your family and like other people in your life? Um, the time God gave me the opportunity to take this course was perfect because this summer has been like the wildest, craziest. It's just been challenging. Like there's been a lot of stuff we've had like deaths in the family. I've had a lot of like medical stuff going on. And I think my attitude and ability to handle those things has changed dramatically. Um, I just got diagnosed with a very random allergy. Um, and I've just been able to see it through a completely different light because, because of the course and because of the habits and activities and daily patterns and like rhythms of life that I've put in place. Um, And that's allowed me to show up more effectively for my family Um, and to show up effectively and be able to truly be present with them when they needed it and not worry about my business. Um, I had, I took some time off in July and it was absolutely wild because when I looked back at my numbers at the end of the month, which funny enough, I, before the course refused to look at my numbers because I was like, if I look at them and I don't like them, then, then what am I going to do then? Um, but Brandon reminded me, they're just numbers. Like it's really not that big of a deal. And so I, I took some time off and was able to really be present for a member of my family who I absolutely love. And I came back and my sales were better than they'd ever been. Um, and that's with me taking, like, I'm not joking, like two and a half weeks off, not on my computer, having like scheduled social media posts, but not doing a ton. And then all of a sudden, like these, these people that need me to plan their vacations just like popped out of nowhere. And so, so I think it's, it's helped me be more present and more intentional in all areas of my life. I realized I was spending way too much time on my cell phone and it was affecting my sleep. Um, one of the habits this course caused me to change was my, my phone. We got an alarm clock, like it's little stuff like that, which ultimately has made a big impact because I'm reading more, which is a hobby of mine. I'm learning more and I'm getting better sleep. So it's just all over in different areas of life, a much more positive, encouraging, less draining outlook on different challenges and situations that we face. I love that. Okay. So I just want to say this just because we were talking about this and I just love people hearing this side of the things. So I am still growing. I am still learning too. And we were, t- and I, this is why I, I love Born to Slay is because it works on no matter what level you're on. And like, so like, whether you haven't started scaling a team yet and you want to, it's perfect for that level. If you have a team 
and you're scaling to another level, it's perfect. And I, I, because the principles don't change, but one of the things we were talking about is how, I guess I'm not perfect (laughs) because, uh, you know, the purpose of like these testimonials, and this is just a learning piece for everybody, anybody that's watching this, but the purpose of a testimonial is not to prove yourself or like what you do that matters. It's to let other people be encouraged uh, by those that have gone through the course or program and also to let people feel safe to actually invest in the program. And um, Mary Catherine is now doing Born to Dominate, which is specifically about emotional intelligence and leadership. And she got the worst automated <laughs> email i have ever sent in my whole entire life um but because i love god's grace and i believe that god brings me amazing clients mary catherine showed me so much grace so i guess what i want to say publicly in mary catherine is thank you for still trusting me after the worst email ever and thank you for your grace like i really appreciate it it's just an email. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you know, we've talked a lot about like, I think my life philosophy at this point is like, nobody's dead. It's really not that big of a deal. So, so I'm like, it's an email. Like we can resend the email, but we all send crappy emails. So no worries at all. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's one of the things I really enjoyed working with you too, is you have a, a, a perspective and you already had, you already had a high degree of confidence too. I think some people think that because I call myself the confident AF mindset coach, that I only work with people who have a low confidence and like the people that I work with definitely do not have a low set of confidence. It's that they know the ego would tell them they don't want to work on their confidence anymore. And they know they need to build their confidence to that whole nother level. Would you agree with that? Or am I making this up? (laughs) I I think it's so funny because I've had people tell me that I'm confident and I'm like, uh, I don't think you know what you're talking about, But, (laughs) but just in like some of the conversations we've had, I think I'm realizing that I do have just a natural level of confidence. I just feel sad sometimes, but that like, I think I always equated like my sadness, which I'm an Enneagram four, if anyone knows what that means. So like, I can get very sad and I, there have been times I've been like, Brandon, what if my sadness like eats me alive? And he's like, it's not going to do that. You're fine. But I think I equated times when I felt sad to me not being confident and I'm learning that they are they're not like mutually exclusive like I can be confident and be sad and it's really not that big of a deal absolutely and when you realize that confidence is knowing in your capabilities and abilities of who God created you to be and what he can help you to accomplish you realize there's no end to building your confidence because there's always a new level of stepping into who he created you to be and always a new level of stepping out in faith to, to take new action you've never done before. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I, I, I've always loved learning, but I have never been a school person because I just feel like it's too structured. I don't know. Um, and so just like being able to acknowledge like, yeah, I want to learn a new thing again. Like I'm, I, I'm finding that the result of this course ultimately is that it's, it's teaching me to ask better questions so that I can learn more effectively. And I mean, I've been in born to dominate for like two minutes and I'm already like, I mean, there are a lot of questions. This whole wall is like papers full of questions. So, <laughs> yeah, well, every question has an answer. So, last and final question is what would you say to someone who is thinking about doing this and they're on the fence? They have that fear. Is it going to work for me? Is it worth it? Like those kinds of fears and they're on the fence. What would you tell that person? So one thing you talk about, or you have talked about is like, 
there's no point in investing in farm equipment if you don't plan to like actually use it. Like you're not gonna, like why purchase an $8,000 piece of equipment and then not use it. So I would say like, you have to be intentional. Like it, it does require intentionality. And if you don't plan on putting in the work, yeah, it's not going to work for you. Like that's just, that's really the bottom line. Um, same goes for marketing or like any practical programs. Like if you're not going to do anything with the information you gained, why bother? But the good news is that even if you don't know what to do with it at the time, if you've invested in it, it's there for you to use. And I love Born to Slay because I've been able to go back and use the pieces again and again in multiple situations, whether that's up leveling like our own personal finances or like doing the business, like there, there's so many ways to up level. So if you're looking for something that really teaches you how to, how to just like live a better life, this is a great option for you with the caveat that it's not going to just like involve you sitting and listening to Brandon. It's going to involve you being <laughs> introspective and taking the time and getting out a pen and a paper, a piece of paper and journaling and, and just like being intentional. So if you want to be intentional and find a way to be a better human, this is a really, a really great thing to invest in. I love that. Thank you so much, Mary Catherine. If you all are interested in applying for Born to Slay, I invite you to apply. We'll put that down below. And Mary Catherine, I'm so proud of you. And I'll see much more of you over the next year in Born to Dominate. And I can't wait to see where that takes both of us. That's going to be great.